looking, but my watch tells me it's 11 o'clock. So welcome everyone to this week's episode of Art Starts Explores. This week we are going to be exploring circles. The voice you're hearing right now is me. My name is Kay Slater and I am the uh, uh, gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Also joining us in the chat channel is our program manager Leah Horlick and uh, the two of us we host this session together because while you can see my hands right now, I'm going to be making here in front of you. My camera is above me and it's pointed down, so I can't actually see all of the comments, but Leah is there in the comments and is available to answer any of your questions, to react to any cool things that you wanna share. Um, and so if you have any questions as we are working along today um, and you wanna ask, go ahead and ask those in the comments. Um, if you are a young person who is joining us, Make sure you ask for permission before you post anything because um, if it's not your account, we want to we both want to get permission, but also we just want to make sure that uh, everybody in your family and uh, wherever you are making today um, are, are okay with you sharing something publicly. So have that conversation. But if you have a question, pop that up and we will answer um, as we're going along and making. So as I said, this week, we are exploring circles. And what's really cool is this month, we're trying something a little new rather than trying to do two themes like we've been doing all summer, we're going to spend the entire month um, exploring circles. So if you can only pop in for a little bit today, don't worry about it. We save all of our videos so you can go back and check them out later. If you're halfway through the video and you're just tired or you have something else to do, you can come back and check out the rest of the video later. But then we also have two more sessions on Saturdays at 11 a.m. where we're gonna to continue to explore circles. So it's lovely to have you all here with me uh, today. I'm gonna to get started with our three rules of explorers. If you have explored with us before, you're probably familiar with our rules. But if this is your first time joining us, don't worry, we go over this every week and uh, we practice these. We're not perfect at these. Some weeks we're better than others, so don't, don't worry. Um, these rules are just to keep us on track. So the three rules or guidelines that we like to look at at Explorers, uh, the first one is respect. And so we practice respect. Remember I said we're practicing. We're not always perfect at it. We practice respect by respecting ourselves. So we're gonna check in with ourselves this morning. How are we feeling? Did we sleep okay? Did we wake up on the wrong side of the bed and we're grumpy? Did we run out of cereal? All those things can affect us today. So let's, let's ask ourselves, how are we feeling today? We practice respect by talking to each other. So if you're making with another family member, a friend, a neighbor, or another adult that you've never made with before, ask them how they're doing. Because maybe you woke up on, a, on the right side of the bed, maybe you're feeling great, and maybe they're feeling kind of slow or tired. And it's good to check in so that everybody knows where everybody's at before we start making. We practice respect by respecting our tools. So whether that's using them safely, we're not gonna move around while we're using scissors, but also we can practice uh, respect for our tools and each other at the same time, because if you're sharing your tools, if somebody else is waiting for their turn, um, if you only need it for a little bit, you could let them know that you only need it for a little bit or you could give them the tools so that they could do their thing and then they can give it back. So that's also practicing our respect with our tools. And then we're gonna put them away when we're all done. Uh, we also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So right here, the screen that you see is my studio right here. And I'm, I'm on uh, stolen, so unceded Coast Salish territory. And I want to acknowledge the Masuyam, Tsleil-Waututh, Skokomish people who have been here for for a really really long time and are still here and I want to practice practice respect by being the best guest while I am making art on this on this land and I encourage you to practice respect by thinking about the land and whose people your land that you that your house or your apartment or your classroom or your community center, wherever you find yourself watching this video today, take a moment and acknowledge the land. And that's how we practice respect. Next one 
next one is nothing is for keeps. So I always like to encourage people to take things out of the recycling bin because nothing we're going to make today is going to be perfect or is going to be complete. We're just trying things out. And if nothing is for keeps, we don't have to worry about making a mistake or we don't have to have a picture on our heads of how something can turn out. We can really take chances and try anything. And the other part is, is that we're going to take it apart when we're done. So whether we take it out of the recycling bin and then put it back in the recycling bin when we're finished, or if we're using something that can't go back into the recycling bin, that's your opportunity if you want to, to rip it up or crumple it up or just throw it in the garbage. Because when we're all finished, all we're taking away with us are the pictures in our brain and the things that we tried, not the final finished thing. And then the last part is uh, no expectations. So part of nothing is for keeps is that picture I told you. If you have a picture in your head of how something's supposed to turn out, you can be disappointed if it doesn't turn out the way that you had hoped or you had planned. But in this art making right now, we have no expectations. Whatever happens is great. And if you're starting in one way, if you're doing something, you come up with another idea, start making that other idea. All ideas are good. And if somebody is making something cool and you want to copy, you maybe want to practice respect and ask if they're okay. But because we're not making anything for keeps, trying out something that you see somebody else doing is a really great way of trying something you might not have tried if you were by yourself. So surprise yourself. Don't try and do something you've done before. Try and do something new. And those are our three rules of explorers. So I'm going to pick up a whole bunch of these pieces that you can see here. And I'm going to put them over to the side because they're here. They're here with us, but we want a bit more space to be able to make uh, as we explore today. So I think I've, to I've told you in the past, but again, if this is your first time here, I always like to try something a little bit new because I'm learning at the same time as you as we explore um, all of these different themes. I don't have a lot of things planned so that we can just check out what happens as we go along. But this week I thought I would go, if you're making a, a long um, wherever you're watching, these are some of the things that I have out on my artboard. And so if you want to exactly copy me, um, I'm going to be using some glue, maybe some tape, uh, markers or pencil crayons, so some mark making tools. If you just have a pencil, that's fine. And if you don't have a pencil, that's fine too. You can use your, your finger and your imagination. Anything you want to make mark making. Um, some string, if you have some string. But again, if you don't, you can just watch me or you can go looking for a hunt later and see if you can find some string. I also like to say if you have some floss, um, if you're not the one who buys this, if somebody else in your family buys this, you might want to ask for permission first. But if you've got some floss, then that also works as string, right? Because it's just a long piece of, of string that you use for your teeth, right? And then um, some paper. So that's where I like to say go into that recycling bin if you have permission, because usually when you find paper that somebody has put in the recycling bin, nobody wants it anymore. So of course you can use it for your art making. And then the last is some scissors. So if you have some scissors available, that's great. But if you don't have some scissors and you've, uh, you've been in our, my workshop before, you know I love ripping paper. And that can be just as good as using a pair of scissors. Okay, so those are some of the tools that I have out on my board, but who knows? If you have something else that you find uh, or I find on my board here, maybe we'll make use of them. Okay, so circles. Are we ready to warm up? That was a lot of talking. Let's start using our hands. So if you have a piece of paper, or again, you just want to watch along, we're going to start with a warm up. So grab your piece of paper. Again, it can be, you can see this was, this was something that somebody threw away. I don't have a printer that, that needs these dots, but this was paper that I could use. So I took it out of the recycling bin and we're going to warm up by taking um, any kind of mark making tool that you can find. I find that markers show up the best on the camera so that you can see it. So I'm going to use a marker, but you can use a pencil crayon. You could use a pencil. As I said before, you could use your finger. You can do however you want to make a mark. And what we're going to do is for the next minute, we're going to draw as many circles as we can fit on the page in front of us. So my watch says 11.09, but I did start a little bit later. I wonder if I can wait till 11.10 so I've got my full minute. Open my marker so I'm all ready to go. I'm going to check out how much space I have on the page. There we go. I have a minute. Let's see how many circles we can put on our page. 
And if you're following along, see how many circles. There's no right way to make a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. The, the circles can touch. They can do whatever you want, however you want to fill your page. Just as many circles as you can put onto your page. Doesn't have to be your right hand or your left hand, however you normally draw. If you're using your mouth, then you know it's, it's your own marker, right? We want to be safe, but if you have permission to use uh, your mouth, you could put put in your mouth a uh, circle. Uh, that was a funny circle. All right, still got a minute. If you want to try it in your using your elbow with a pencil crayon, any way you can draw a circle, but just try. Fill up your page. Okay, so that was a minute for me. If you started a little bit later, that's fine. All right, so I have a page full of circles. Some of them are more perfect than others. This was the funny one that I tried with my mouth. I didn't quite close it up. Let's take a moment to look at our circles. Your circles probably look different than mine if you drew them. So you can look at your circles. And if you didn't draw circles, you can look along with me. So I'm going to take another, here I'm going to take something bright so you can see it. And I'm going to check out my page. What do I notice? Actually, I'm even going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to write things down as I notice them. Okay, so what do I notice first? I notice that this is round. So if I was going to describe this, I could say that it is round. What else could I notice? Um, well, another way to describe something that that is, is a circle, is circular. So like when you're describing ice, um, you, you say that it's frozen. So it's still ice, but I'm describing it, it's frozen. So yes, this is a circle, but it's also circular. So that means you can, you can look at something else and say, yeah, this is a sticker, but it's also circular because it's kind of like a circle. So I'm gonna write down circular. What else do we notice as we go around? I'm going to I'm going to write down that this is a line, right? Because this is a line on the outside. It's a line. In art words, you can also say plane. And yes, there's the there's the airplane. There's um there's also a different spelling P L A I N which means basic or simple. So this one just means plane. It's, it's another word for line or surface. So I'm going to say line or plane. What else do you notice? You probably notice something different. I'm going to notice that even though I said I could go over top of them, and I did, I did in this one overlap, basically all the circles are just squished together. So I'm going to write down the word squished. And I'm going to also say, oh, you know what? These are empty. Right? Most of these are empty. I just did the line or the plane on the outside and I left the inside empty. So I'm going to go empty. And I'm going to notice that there was an inside and an outside because I didn't fill the whole page. This is kind of like the outside. And these are kind of like, well, this one doesn't really have an inside. It kind of does though, right? Because you can see the line here. And then all of these other circles that are all around, it kind of makes it so that it's all contained. So if you imagine pouring water, into any of these circles, right? How far could the water go if it was trapped by the outside? So, um, what did I say? I said outside. Just any word. There is no wrong word for what you notice. And if you're not making a list, you can just say it out loud. Outside, inside. If you're making with a friend or another adult, you can ask them what they notice. Maybe they notice something different. Did you draw with different colors? I only used one color. Maybe you used different colors. Maybe you drew some that were with thin markers or thin pencil crayons and some with thick. So your list is going to be different than mine. The last two words that I think I'm going to notice is I said container. And I said container because all of a sudden I imagined that this circle was like a container that I could pour water into, right? It kind of looks like the top side of a bowl. So when I'm talking inside and outside, it means that all of a sudden this circle is something that I could put 
a whole bunch of other things inside of. So it becomes a container, right? Something that I can put it inside of, like a square box, or sort of circle, a circular, right, description, a circular box or a hole, right? So it's a container. Okay, the last thing I wanted to notice was I, I can't actually tell in most of these places where I started the circle and where I ended the circle. So this one, sure, but I can't tell you which point I started. Maybe I started at this point, maybe I started at this point, but I don't remember after looking at all these circles. So I'm gonna write down no beginning, right? I guess I could write down no ending as well. No end, because I don't know. Really look at your circles. Some of your circles you might be able to tell. I feel like this one right here, when I went around the circle, I didn't quite connect it up. So I feel like that could have been starting and ending, but I'm guessing, I don't actually know for sure. Is it clear on yours? Let's talk about starting and ending right now when it comes to circles. I feel like we're warmed up now. And if you wanna keep drawing circles while I'm talking, that can be really great. You can just be listening to me while you continue to move your hand. And some people actually listen and understand better when they're doing a drawing while they're, they're listening. And so as long as you're still, you know, listening and thinking about the things that you're doing, then, then go for it. And if you've had enough already and you just want to draw a whole bunch of circles, that's okay too. You can come back and listen to us later. Okay, so that was our warm up. I'm gonna put that over to the side and I'm gonna talk about beginnings and endings. So let's look at this page here. Can we see a circle? I mean, I see some circles on the outside because that's how the paper came. But what about in this blank space? I mean, there's a whole bunch of circles here and they had to get on the page somehow. So a blank paper is kind of like the beginning of a circle, right? Because it hasn't been drawn yet. We didn't start anywhere. So a blank page is really the start of a circle or the start of anything. And I thought that it would be fun for us to think about circles in September because I'm sure that a lot of people who are watching right now are thinking and preparing uh, for a new year of school. And however school might look this year, whether it means going to a new place for school, staying home and learning, going to a totally different place than you went last year, starting school, however it's going to be, it's a whole brand new start, so it's kind of like a blank page. And if we think of things, uh, if we think of circles, like maybe time, you have to start at a point somewhere, right? To make the circle, we have to make a mark. So make a mark on your page and then put your marker back on it. And let's think about it. Let's think about the school year or maybe the, maybe the summer or how long it takes us to eat a bowl of cereal. Just let's think about something that has a start and an end and think about it while we draw our circle. Actually, I really like that thing about the cereal. I'm gonna go back to thinking about my cereal. So starting on the page, I had to get my bowl out. I had to get the milk out of the fridge and I drink almond milk. And I had to get my cereal off the shelf and I had to open it up. And I had to pour the cereal into the bowl and maybe you could hear the sound that the cereal made. And then you had to pour the milk onto the cereal and then you had to find a spoon and then you started eating the cereal and then you were left with an empty bowl again. <laughs> I didn't quite uh, match up here. I'm going to just clean that up, make my bowl a little thinner so that you can't really see the start and finish. But that's Right? So now that we did that with an activity, and maybe you were thinking about the school year, or maybe you were thinking about your summer, a circle does have a beginning and an end, but next time I get out my cereal, I might start here, or maybe the bowl is already out. So all I need to do is get out the milk, and get the cereal out, and pour the milk, and eat my cereal, and maybe wash my bowl so that it's out next time. And so really I can start at any time. Maybe my mom got my bowl out or maybe I'm over at a cousin's house 
or maybe it's the first time that I'm visiting a new family or I'm checking out somebody, a friend's house for the first time and they've already got the bowls and the cereal has already been poured and all I have to do is get the milk, put it into the bowl and then eat the cereal and then wash the bowl and then leave it out on the counter to dry, right? So I'm doing the same things, I'm just starting at a different point. So that's the really cool thing about circles is that you really can start anywhere. I started at the top when I did my circle, we were talking about time, but what if I started on the side and made my circle? What if I started and I didn't go in this direction? You can see, so I'm gonna put my point here and then I'm gonna put an arrow so that you can see. Right, so this is the direction that I went. Well, what if I wanted to go this direction for the circle? Right? Or, again, the, the starting at different points. I wanna start over here and go in this direction or this direction or from the bottom, right? But as soon as you close the circle, it really has no start or end. You can start anywhere. And what do these circles remind you of? I, I brought up the, the idea of time. Have you ever seen one of these in your classrooms or hanging on the wall? Yeah, right? It's a clock. And a lot of people now, right, have a watch or have a digital clock where it's square and then they've got the numbers inside of it, right? But if we're thinking about these clocks here, right, where they've got a long arm and they've got a short arm, can you think about the path that they take? So right now, this looks like it's if I was going to go 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 11, like a clock, right now it's pointing at basically 2 o'clock and 12 o'clock. So this, this clock here means that it's 2 o'clock now, right? I have two circles in my time for 2 o'clock. And so now if I was going to move it ahead an hour, right, we would go in a circle. heard the idea of the the, um, the words walk in a circle so you're, you're you start in one place and then you start to walk in a circle and then maybe you do it again what do you typically feel when you watch somebody walking in a circle or how do you feel when you're walking in a circle I feel bored if I have to walk in the same thing over and over again if I'm outside Maybe my feet are making the sand move and I'm starting to make a circle with my feet, right? And then finally I'm finished and I put it away and I throw it away. And maybe I clean them and at some later day I'm making a circle, right? It's kind of the same as time. And if you were going to watch a clock do the whole hour, that would probably be as boring as watching somebody do or walk in a circle. If you have the ability to, to get up and move in a circle or wheel in a circle, or even if you don't want to stand up and you just want to roll around in a circle, it's probably pretty boring after a while, right? Maybe it's fun at the beginning, but doing the exact same thing over and over again, it's kind of boring, right? This is why this activity was way more fun, right? We got to do lots and lots of circles over and over again. But the idea of thinking about starting and beginning of a circle is that you have to start somewhere. I'm sure you have to end somewhere because we can't be doing this forever because it would be boring. But let's do that. Let's start. Let's start the circle. And then let's just have no ending. Let's just keep drawing the same circle. What happens? What do you notice? And you decide where you're going to end. I actually can't even decide where I'm going to end because I don't really... I don't really need to end at any time, right? I can just keep going. I don't have to finish it. The circle's already finished, but I'm still going in a circle. What do you notice? How does that make you feel? All right, 
So I stopped in a completely different place this time. Did you see what happened? So if I'd taken this circle, and remember I can start anywhere because there's no start or end, and I just kept doing my circle, right? So now I'm not going to finish on the outside. I'm going to finish when there's no more color anymore. So this one, my goal was to start somewhere and to finish it as a circle, so I wanted to start where I ended, right? Start and then end. For this one, I wanted to end when it was colored. What are other ways that we could make a circle with a different rule for ending? How about we're going to make a circle, um, we're going to make a circle until we can count 15 lines, okay? So I'm going to take, I'm going to take another piece of paper, I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper here, and you can take whatever paper you find. Let's, let's do the circle until we can count 15 lines. Ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15. Oh, I think I went too many. Okay, so I'm counting lines by wherever they're divided, right? So we've got one line. They're all still circles, right? One line, two lines, three lines, four lines. It's actually harder than you think, right? Five lines, six lines, seven lines, Eight lines, nine lines, right? This little one here. Ten lines, eleven lines. I think I said eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh no, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Gosh. Right? It's harder than you think to do 15 lines. I actually did 22, right? So that's a fun way to challenge yourself. How many, so when you're doing the circles, can you actually get it so you have 15 lines? And maybe you're going to come up with different rules while you're playing this game. Maybe it's only um, one continuous line, or maybe it's going to be only lines that are crossing other things, or maybe it's 15 circles, and then you're going to count how many lines you can find or you're going to color all the different sections in between the lines, right? So this can be a fun thing to do if you're trying to warm up or you want to, um, you want to draw something but you can't think of something to draw, or if you're exploring like this and you're just trying to find out what happens when you try these different things. That's the great thing about exploring, right? We can just make up rules as we go along. I actually really like how that looks. It kind of looks like a flower, right? If I was to draw a big circle in the center here, and I'm going to color in that circle so you can really see the circle, and now we've got a flower made up of circles. What else can we make up using circles? All right, so I'm going to pull my warm up to the side. I feel like we're nice and warmed up, and let's yeah, I'm gonna put this over here because what do we notice as we keep going? Let's think about what we can make with circles. Now remember how I was talking about containers before? Well, I don't know about you, but we're getting closer and closer to lunch. And so I want us to think about all the things that we could put in, um, in a round shape. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about some food right now, but you don't have to use food. You could think of anything that's circle. Maybe your laundry basket is circle. Or maybe you use a bowl when you go outside and you pick fruits or vegetables with your family. Or when you're going out and you're trying to find cool rocks on the beach. Maybe, oh, on the beach you've got, you've got um, a bucket. You know what, I think I'm gonna go in that direction. Before we think about all, the, uh, we actually start drawing that, let's think about containers. 
that are circular. I'll put my I'm hungry off to the side for a second. And remember, that's okay, right? I'm going in another direction because we have no plans. We're just going to explore circles together. And if you have a different idea about circles that you want to go try, try it. Keep listening along. We'll come back later. Okay, let's think about all the things that are circular that are a container. So I had said bucket. So I'm going to draw a bucket right now. And if we were going to look at the bucket from the top, right, that would be the circle of the top, and then the little handle over here that sits to the side. And then if we look down, the bottom of our bucket is kind of smaller, right? So there's the circle. So there's lots of circles in the bucket. What else? I was talking about a bowl. Right? And then if we were going to look at the bowl at the top, it would be that circle. And then maybe another circle right here for the lip. And I'm just doing this from my brain right now, but if you wanted to go and find yourself a container that was circular and bring it out and look at it and draw it, that's a good way of looking and learning how to draw these things. You might also notice that I'm drawing circles here at the top. They're really flat. And that's because what I'm doing is, is that I'm looking at it on the side. So if you looked at my host right here, right, my little um, paper towel, host here, my mini host, you can see that it's round, right? When you, when you take the paper towel all off, it's round. It's got the circle at the top. But watch what happens to the circle as I move it, right, on the camera. Can you see how the circle actually looks kind of squished now? Here, I can do that with, with this tape as well. That might be a little bit clearer. So there, you can see the circle right now. And then as I move it this way, do you see how the circle kind of looks like it's squished? I'm going to follow this line up at the top. And I'm coloring this tape because I have permission. But before you start coloring the tape, make sure you're asking a, a guardian or an adult before you start doing this. If it's, part, if it's your tape, it's fine. But if it's the family's tape or if it's your classroom's tape, you want to do that. That's OK. This is my tape. So watch watch the blue line as we, as we squish it. Put my little paper down. Right? I didn't squish the tape, it's still a circle. But as you watch the line there, it looks like it's kind of squished. And so if we look at the bowl that I drew here, right, that's the circle if we're looking at it from above. But then if that was the side of the bowl, now we're going to have a circle that's kind of squished, right? And so that's just changing the view. So this is from the top, and this is from the side. What happens if we look at the circle um, on, in this direction, right, from a different angle completely? Can you see a circle now? Right? So if we were going to draw this bowl right here, all of a sudden we don't have a circle. We have a half circle at the bottom here, but you can't see the circle at the top. So as you're finding and thinking about these different containers, think about what happens to the circle as you look at it from different angles. And if you can, pick it up, turn it around. See if you can draw it. What do you have to do different when you're looking at something straight on versus from the top or a little bit on the side? How does the circle change? OK, so we had a bucket. We had a bowl. How about a circular pan? So if you were going to have a pizza, See, I am hungry today. So if you had um, a pizza, or what about a frying pan, right? There's lots of circles in our kitchen, or in a kitchen. But if you're not somewhere that has a kitchen, next time you are in a kitchen, you can go looking for circles, right? That's a, that's a frying pan. What if we were going to look at a frying pan on the side? So there's our squish circle again. And then the frying pan handle comes over here towards us. Another circle where it can hang up. Okay, so now we have a frying pan. What else is circular uh, that we can put things into? Maybe you have, oh, have you ever seen a circular backpack? If you, um, if you have some of those sports bags, sometimes have you ever seen the sports bags that they're, they have like a tube down in the center? And then maybe they have a mesh bag down here. 
and there's a mesh at the top. So you put all your things in the bag and then you can pull a drawstring and close it up, right? And so if we were gonna look at this from the top, all kind of squished down, it would probably look like this. So there's the mesh and then the fabric comes off to the side and then there's a mesh bag that it's tied off. And so it's a circle, right? There's a circular container. Okay, we have a mesh bag. What else is circular that we can put things into? Think of something? I've got one more. What if you think like a dog? Have you ever seen a dog go out into the yard and dig a hole? Right? So they're digging up all of the hole in the ground that they can put things down into. Maybe it's not a perfect circle, right? Maybe it's not squished. Maybe it's not perfect like this. And so I'm going to draw that like that by having kind of a shaky line on the outside. So it's kind of circular, but it's probably not square, and it's probably not triangle. So check it out. Next time you see um, a dog who's going to be digging in the earth, or maybe you're just walking along and you see a hole, look at the shape. And we can put things like, we can put rocks, we can put dirt back in there, we could dig a hole on the beach, and we could put water in there. So just all the things that are circular. And if you think of other containers, so objects that you can put things in that are circular, keep drawing. And I can't see the comments right now. If you can think of some other um, circular objects or items that we can put things in, let me know. I'd love to see it. Okay, so I'm going to put this over to the side of the container, and we're going to go back to putting things into the circle. And I told you I was hungry, but you've got lots of different other containers now that you could be thinking of um, if you want to use that as your container. So I'm going to start with a bowl. And so we don't have to do any details, we can just do a circle, right? Any size of circle. And we're just using our imagination by calling this a bowl. And I'm looking at it from the side, but if you want to, you could draw one of the, the side views right here. I'm sorry, I'm looking at it from the top. So there's our bowl. And here, I'm gonna give it a little lip on the outside. That's the part where we can hold on to. Well, it didn't make a perfect circle, that's okay. Okay, so what kind of things can we put into a bowl? If we are in, um, if we're in a kitchen or we're at a restaurant or we're at the playground and somebody gives us um, a bowl, what can we put into a bowl? So there's the edible things um, and non-edible things, so you know, like rocks or toys or whatever. But I'm going to pretend like we're making a salad. And this doesn't have to be a salad that we're going to eat. We can put anything in our salad today, right? So just because I'm hungry doesn't mean that we're, we have to play imagine with a real salad that we're going to eat. Also, we're making it out of paper, right? So we're probably not going to eat, so we can put whatever we want. Let's try to only put round things or circular things into our salad. Okay, so I'm going to start with something that is, that is actually edible. And I'm going to, I'm going to start with a tomato, right? And so if you think about a tomato, Usually it's kind of round. Maybe it's not a perfect circle, and that's okay. Have you ever seen a perfect circle in real life? Right? Sometimes the, the tomatoes or the apples that you might see in a grocery store look really, really perfect, but most of the time they don't actually look perfect, and that's okay because it's really hard to make a perfect circle. So if I was going to cut into this tomato to put it into my salad, I could cut it so that I could cut it here, and maybe it makes a wedge, right? And then it has some seeds inside of it, and that's red too. But how would I cut my round object so that it, um, so that it was a circle too? And that could be a hard thing to think about: how to how to divide a three D shape. So if you have more paper right now, or you have the paper that you've already drawn on, because remember, nothing's for keeps, I encourage you to roll up your piece of paper in your hands, right? Crinkling paper, ripping paper, I love to do that. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can just watch me do that. And I'm going to roll it through my hands, and I'm going to make a ball. All right, so you looking at this from above, it looks like, it looks like a circle, right? see that it looks like a circle but to me I can see other sides I'm not just looking at it from one angle 
I can see that it's round in different places. So if I wanted to cut this up, but still have a round shape, how would we do that? Well, let's try. Let's see what happens. So if you have a pair of scissors, and if your scissors are sharp like this, and you have an adult nearby, please ask them to use it for you, because this is going to be a little bit harder to cut. And if you don't, if you're just by yourself, or if the people that you are um, making with right now are young, why don't you just watch me while I do this, okay? So I talked about cutting just a section out of it, and that would probably be really hard with this piece of paper. But what happens if I cut it in half? Yeah, that is really hard. Maybe you should just watch me, especially, especially if you don't have a, an adult at home. Remember, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, that squished from where I was holding it right there. But check this out, right? That's the half. And can you still see the circular shape right here? So by cutting that circle in half, right, the, 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 the sphere actually, right? So when we're looking at a circle that, um, that goes from this shape to having a round ball that still has a circle in it, right? There's lots and lots of circles in that by cutting it in half, and then you have two circles. Have you ever cut an orange in half? And then you look at the orange from above? It's the same as a bowl. If you were to take two bowls and put the bowls together, right? You probably have a round shape, you'd have a circle. And that's what we're doing with the tomato. Instead of having the two half shapes that we're putting together, we're taking the full piece and we're taking it apart. So there we go, I tested with this piece of paper right here, and again, if you're watching this and you, you, you're giving it a try and it was hard, I encourage you to put the scissors down and just check out what I did because it was very hard to cut through that paper. And I didn't know, right? I was practicing surprise. I didn't know what would happen and I wanted to see. So if we're thinking about this tomato again, we'll bring this back again, and we wanted to cut it so that we could have a round shape, we would cut the tomato in half and then we'd have the tomato shape seeds inside of it. Maybe it's a little goopy from where the tomato juice has come out of it, but that's how we would get a cut round tomato. And now I've got a tomato for myself. Okay, so if you have your scissors, you can cut that up. And if you don't have scissors, remember, I'm all about you ripping paper. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Even if your, your circle was perfect, the, the ripped paper doesn't have to be perfect. Let's take our tomato, let's put it in our salad bowl. What else can we put in that is round into our salad? Well, I think that a bicycle wheel is round, isn't it? Remember, we're, we're playing pretend we're not actually going to eat this. And so it's anything round that we can think of that we can put in our salad. And that's already round. I don't have to, I don't have to cut my, my wheel in half. I don't have to think about dividing my wheel. It's just ready to go. And maybe your bike wheel or your car wheel or the wheel of a toy, um, whatever wheel you're thinking of, maybe it looks a little bit different than mine. Maybe the outside of the tire is thicker. Maybe your bike has colors on the spokes. Maybe you borrowed a bike one time that had red tires. So however your tire looks, that's how my tire is going to look. Same thing as before. I'm just going to rip it. And if you have a pair of scissors that you feel safe using, go for it. Oh gosh, look, look at that, my salad bowl. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm even going to rip my salad bowl over here so that it doesn't have to move around on the page. I'm going to put my, I'm going to put my tomato back in there. What else are we going to add to our round salad? What else are we going to add? What else is circular? How about a, uh, what else? What else is circular? What can you see around your house that is circular? I'm gonna put a watch. We talked about time before, right? And I'm gonna put a round watch. You can see my watch right here. It's got, it's got a square face on it, but I'm gonna pretend like this watch that I'm drawing right now has a circle face on it. And you know what, you don't even have to do, remember how we were talking about 
um, a clock having the, the minute hand and the hour hand like that, you could do your circle for your watch and then you could actually just write one clock. See, two circles and a time right there for the O's. You could just go like that. Um, and I, you know what, even though this is the part that's circular, I'm gonna add an armband. Okay, that's the wrist, the wristband that you would put onto there. And I'm gonna color it as well. What are you making for your salad? What's round that you thought of? Yeah, so it's pink, like my, my wristband here. Here we go. Finish it off again. What is going into your salad? I'm so curious. I can't wait to find out. Only round things. Go. There's our salad. So I'm going to call this round salad. Let's put one more thing. Let's put something that, that someone could eat. Not necessarily, maybe you don't like to eat it. Maybe you don't like tomatoes, but that's okay. Remember, this is our imaginary thing. Maybe this is for my, my go straight here. They're going to have the, uh, they're going to have the round salad. What else could we put in our salad that is round? Maybe a different color this time. I know what I'm going to put in my salad because I can see all this blue here. I'm going to put a blue balloon. Have you ever blown up a balloon? There's different kinds, there's different kinds of uh, balloons. This one's going to be my round balloon. Maybe you've seen a balloon before that is long, right? You ever seen a clown take one of the balloons and then twist it into a balloon animal? So you can have the long ones, and then maybe you've seen uh, balloons before at the grocery store where they're shaped in funny shapes, like a like a number, right? And then they usually have some like foil around the outside of it. And sure, it works blurring circles, but we were thinking about balloons for a second, so I decided to draw a balloon because we have no expectations. We're just trying out different things. But for my salad. I'm just going to draw, I'm just going to use my circular pen. And if you draw something the first time and it doesn't work out, draw another one, right? Because we're just using all of this scrap paper and we're just trying something that isn't for keeps. You can draw things over and over again until the thing that you drew um, is the one that you want to use. And remember, don't be afraid for it to be bad. Even if you drew three good, good balloons, Try to draw one that's bad. What does it look like when you draw a bad balloon? What does a bad balloon look like? Maybe it's kind of squished in a space. And then, oh, maybe my balloon has a hole and that it's starting to, the air is starting to come out, right? What does it look like when you draw something that you can draw really well, not as well? Maybe you'll notice something new. You know what? Even though this was perfect and I really like this one, I'm going to do the one that isn't perfect because we're not doing this for keeps. We're just doing it to find out what happens if I. So I wonder how my imaginary salad would taste if I put a not so perfectly round, oh, here, I need to draw it on my hat as well. A not so perfectly round balloon into my salad. I bet you anything would taste exactly the same as if I put my perfect balloon in there. But who knows? You get to make up the rules as we explore. Oh, see, I ripped some of my balloon, that's okay. We're just trying. I used so much, I used so much uh, marker on this one that it's ripping really easily this time. So ripping so easy that it's going right into the paper. What are you using to draw? If you have, if you have a marker and you've been using pencil crayon or pencil, what happens when you try to rip the page when you use marker versus pencil? Or if you're cutting, right? What happens if you cut? with um, something that you drew with marker versus when you used a pencil crayon. What happens if? So check it out, it even got more mangled as I tried to rip this one, right? It kind of came off to the side. I lost some of the string, but that's okay. So I'm gonna put it into my round salad. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one more uh, activity. So this was playing with different round containers, right? We were thinking about how to divide things up. We divided a tomato, right, that was round, 
and cut it into two pieces so that we could have the round at the top. We thought about things that were round that we couldn't actually eat, but that's okay because it's made out of paper. It doesn't have to be something that we could eat in real life. So a balloon, a watch face, a tire. Gosh, who would be able to eat this and not have a stomachache afterwards? So we had our division and, and portions. Put this to the side. And don't forget, as you keep playing with me today or playing for the rest of the day, if you think of other round containers, keep adding them to your piece of paper. Right? There's no right answer. And maybe you'll learn that you're really good at drawing one kind of container and another kind of a container is really difficult. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side. We're gonna try one more thing with circles today. So you may have heard me use the word perfect a few times, right? And what, what does that mean? What, what is a perfect circle? Right? So a perfect circle is really just a mathematical thing. If you're learning any math in school, right? So how to add and how to subtract and divide and multiply, or maybe you're a little older and you're starting to learn things like uh, algebra or geometry. And geometry is a kind of math where you're looking at shapes. So you learn how to make shapes with math. And so I made this shape with scissors, but I had to, before I could draw this, I had to figure out how big I wanted to cut this beforehand by figuring out how big this line was here. And you can see how this space here, this line here is the same this line over here, right? This length is the same. And I know that because this is the object that I used. I used a tool to create a perfect circle. So what this is, is this is a compass. So just like maybe you've seen one of these before, where you use it to draw. So the side has a pencil here, and the side has a sharp point. And you put that on the piece of paper, and then you can draw around the outside. This is almost exactly the same thing only mine has the sharp point here and another sharp point over here, which is a scissors. So it's just like if you've ever seen an X-Acto knife, what it is, is is that this side right here, instead of having a pencil, has a knife on it. And so it's very sharp. That's why I didn't put it on our list because you, you probably don't have one of these at home. But I wanted to show you that if I wanted to make an absolutely perfect circle, um, I would probably have to use a tool because it's incredibly hard. It's so hard that remember how I told you before in nature, there isn't, you don't, you can't find a perfect circle. Maybe, maybe you'll find something that's really close to a perfect circle. But when you go and see flowers, if you went up and you went around with your ruler, and if you've got a ruler and you can take a nature walk, you can take your, your ruler with you. You want to be careful. You don't want to touch flowers that don't belong to you. And in general, if you can, if you can go up to the flowers, so here's the flower real big, found the flower in nature, and you want to measure if the circle on the inside is perfect, we don't actually have to go up and touch the, the flower. What we can do is we can just bring our, our uh, ruler close and then use our fingers and go, okay, it's kind of, it's kind of like two inches over here. And then if we go over here, we go, oh, it's kind of two inches over here. But if we go over here, Oh, it's more like two and a half inches. And when you're playing like this, it's actually even easier if you use centimeters because then you can really tell the difference here. So I'm gonna put my finger on the 10 here and pretend like that zero. Cause right, if I started here at the end, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, that's the zero. If you look at the 10 and you pretend like the first number isn't there, right? So if you take your 10 and you take your one off of it, you can pretend like 10 is zero and then 11 is 1, and 12 is 2, and 3 is 13, right? And so now you can go in the middle of your ruler, and you can do the same thing as I was doing. So you go up to your flower, and you don't have to touch it, and you can go, okay, so that looks like it's about 5 centimeters, because it went from the 10 to the 15. And so and we take the 1 off the front, so that's a 0 to a 5, so it's about a 5 there, without me actually having to touch the flower. And you can go around and you can see how close it is that this line here from end to end, which in math they call the diameter, diameter, right? Which is the length of 
this edge to edge right here. And in nature, it's very, 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 very rare. It doesn't happen very often that this line is the same as this line. And that kind of gives us an out when we're drawing, when we're trying to do things um, creatively, that if nature can't even grow a perfect flower, then we probably don't need to take our compass and draw a circle to do our flower. In fact, it probably would look more like nature if we were to draw a whole bunch of imperfect circles, right? Not only does it make each one of the flowers more interesting and unique, right? So they're each their own different flower, but it also doesn't look like uh, it doesn't look like a, a cartoon. It doesn't look quite as unreal because a garden isn't perfect, right? So go on out and check, check things that you can find on a walk or in the yard, in the schoolyard, over at a friend's house, if you're visiting an extended family member and you go um, and take a trip, or you're just going for a walk in the evening. Check out all the different flowers or um, circles that you can find in nature and you'll see that it's very rare for you to have an exactly perfect circle. So sure you want perfect in math and the reason is when you get older you'll learn that um, you use math to measure a whole bunch of things using circles but when it comes to drawing we don't need a perfect circle at all. There's one other kind of circle that I wanted to kind of bring up when we were talking about perfect circles is have you ever seen one of before. That's a kind of circle. Have you seen one of these before? If you don't recognize this shape, I'll give you a hint. You can open it up like this, and then all of a sudden, maybe there's one of these in here. Right? Can you actually see that? No, it's a little darker. That's right, it's an egg, right? And so what we call this shape right here is an oval. And what's really cool about ovals is that there's no math that's connected to an oval. And the reason is because an oval is absolutely going to be different every single time. It's really, really hard to use math to create an oval. It's going to be different every time. And the reason is, is because remember how I was talking about the compass here? and this being the same. And here, I'm gonna show you so that you can see what I'm, I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna use this. You can see I'm holding in the center here. I'm moving the pencil oop, all the way around. And so from where the middle was, where my, my compass was right here, to the upside here, that's gonna be the same here as it was here, 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 right? But I had to use a tool to be able to get that perfect shape. How do I make an oval using this tool? How would I do that? Well, I can't, because if I picked the center of this oval, this, this line right here is way longer than this line right here. Can you see that? Right, here, I'll do that in a different color so you can see. This line right here, is way different from this line right here. Try it out. See if you can draw the exact same oval over and over and over again. And I bet you anything you won't be able to. An oval is a really hard shape to do consistently. And that's why, you know, not only is there no tool that, that, that does that. I mean, we could make a tool with computers and things like this, but a handheld tool like this that you're gonna have like this, it would be really, really hard to make a perfect oval, except if we take two circles, check this out, right? So it actually took two circles. To make our oval, to make our egg shape. Right? So if you ask me, I think, I think the oval for imperfect circles 
are way cooler than perfect circles. Not only are they easier to draw, we don't need to have a tool for them, but we need two circles to make an oval. What else did you notice today while we were making? Did you notice something different? I'd love to hear about it. As I told you at the beginning of today's session, we are going to be exploring circles every week for the next three weeks. So join me again next Saturday at 11 in the morning for another art making session on circles. If you liked something today or you learned something today and you want to tell us about it, you can pop into the uh, chat and you can tell us about it. And I'm going to close up today's session with two things. I'm going to close it up with a song and I'm going to close it up by leaving the camera running for about five more minutes at the end so that you can be watching me clean up and inspire you to clean up all of your space because remember one of the rules of Explorers is that when we're all finished making, we're going to take it all apart, we're going to put it away in the recycling bin so that we can start fresh again next Saturday. So thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you next week at 11. And so I just wanted to leave you with a song about circles. I'm going to get a piece of paper and I'm going to draw a circle while I leave you with this last song. Okay, ready? A circle's round, it has no end. That's how long I'm going to be your friend. All right, it was really great to make with you this week and I will see you next week at 11 a.m. Thanks everyone.